just thank you, God. You, we just exalt you, Father. We, ju we just praise you, Father. Father, we just created to worship you, Father. We just thank you, God. Because you created me to worship. You created me to love you with love. I will not end. You created me to honor. You created me to praise you. This is what I've been created for. So I take off my crown and I worship you as Lord. Here I am, bowing at your feet, crying, holy, holy, holy to you. Take off. 
to just wait a minute. I just really feel uh, feel that we're supposed to spend a couple minutes here just praising the Lord, uh, telling Him how wonderful He is, praising God, giving Him praise and honor and glory. Can we all do that? Father, we just thank You right now. We praise You, Lord. We just praise You right now. Thank oh, You, so good to us, Lord. We love You so much, Lord God. You're so good to us, Lord. We love You, 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 Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We that are running, Father, for Marty and for Doug. God, I ask for favor in the elections that we just got our ballots today, Father. I ask for supernatural favor today, God, for Marty, God, and supernatural favor for, for Doug, Father, and all those that are running on a conservative ticket across this nation, God. I pray for, oh, Lord, we turn the battle at the gate, Lord, they're, they're, Lord, we just pray not just for Republicans, but those that love Jesus. I don't care if it's a Democrat that loves Jesus as yes, long as they put you first, God. Yes. We want men and women that put you first, that honor you, that honor the gospel, Father. Turn this nation back to Jesus. Turn this nation back to Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 
God send you glory. And I was listening to, to Jeff Jansen this morning. I don't remember all the cities, but he was going to Australia and the angel of the Lord appeared to Jeff and he said, you know, I'm going to pour up my spirit at, on Melbourne and Sydney and I, I don't remember all the cities exactly. But you know, God wants to pour out His spirit. He just longs to pour out His spirit and He's shown one of His videotapes where the glory of God broke over the church and man, feathers just start swirling over the ceiling. All these hundred thousands of feathers just started floating over the, over the ceiling in one of his videos somewhere. I don't, I don't even remember where he was at, but how I many of God just wants to reveal his glory? Yeah. Yes. He yeah. just wants to reveal so much of who he is. And, and, I, and I just believe... Uh, Tell him how, how Marty had the feather fall in his hand. Oh, Marty was just... Uh, well, he told me that, but Marty was going through a hard time this week with a lot of accusation at work, too. He was telling me, Brother Marty and... And then you hear about what happened to Brother Bob, uh, you know, was going on Brian. with Brian. But this feather fell three days ago when he was being accused. But every people started coming against him. And I don't know if he's called any human resources, you know, but God just showed his favor. He says, man, the feather can float into my hand, you know what I mean? How many know God wants to us to show us that he's with us even when he's, even when things are not going great, you know? I mean, I was so cool because when Nicole lost her sister and, they go downstairs and there's two loaves of bread on our keyboard this week that supernaturally appeared from bread, bread from heaven. And they're the ones that first noticed the bread at Glenn's house and they walked in down with the first one to notice it. And so, and so, uh, and there were two loaves that showed up then. One on each of her keyboards. She had two keyboards, one loaf on each keyboard. Yeah, and two when they first walked into the Glenn, Glenn interior. Interior. Well, it wasn't there when he first walked in. Right, no. But when right. he walked in, and, and, I, there was, and then his wife walked in, he checked the chairs where Glenn and Terry were sitting. There was nothing there. And, and his wife walks in, and he turns, see, greets his wife and turns back around. Two loaves just appeared. And I don't know, during that time he turned around. I don't know whether it was a... Half minute, twenty seconds, a minute—I I don't know. But you know, you know, God is doing wonderful things. Yeah. You know, and I'm really, really pray. In fact, we, we here comes Howie. We've got people coming out the end of the month, end of August. In fact, some of them are looking for places to stay. If they won't come unless they can, because they can't afford the hotels and fly out here. But we have up to thirteen people coming into the month, end of August, and so. We're going to do a Tuesday, Wednesday service in my house here. I think it's August 26th and 27th. But I might go see if I can use the Salt and Light Church. I, I want to do that, but part of my concern is I, I want to use their church if I can, but I don't want the elders to come and hear what's going on because sometimes if they know we've hosted, they've let us use it and there's something. How many know that can cause religious spirits to rise up? You know, how many know what I'm talking about? And I just, yeah. my biggest right. concern is. I don't want it to have a negative effect on some of the critical. If, they, if there is a critical spirit, I don't know that'll find a way into that church. You know, if I can rent it right out without, hey, no, is, you know, because you can come, but because, and I've taught some of the ladies, I says, well, why, why don't you use our church? They already asked me if I'd use it, but I says, I just says, this is my concern. I don't know if that's just me being over cautious or just by experience and seeing how the enemy gets into something like that, especially when there's a lot of... They're not like us where you move that direction all the time. There's some that would just jump into it, but there's probably another third that would be like, whoa, what's going on? Mm -hmm. and, that can, and that's what happened to Jerry before at Midway Covenant, where he was moving in the Holy Spirit and signs and wonders and miracles and deliverance, and the church voted him out before. You know, so that spirit can still follow a few along and do, do it again. So that's, that's my big concern. There's also fire, the Firestorm Church down. It's Federal Way. It's across from Madison West, but where Firestorm meets. Virginia has said they can have a, a hold up to 80. It's well, not let me, a lot you, bigger. Well, let me give, give me Virginia my number. Okay, have her call me. Maybe I'll do the Wednesday, Thursday there because I'd like to be able to get. What are they? What are they meeting? Well, it's, they, the it depends on if they. It, yeah, it, it's a church, but okay. they have it sometimes. Hey, but. They have it sometimes, but there's another church that has it sometimes. Oh, but all right. if they have it rent, if they have it for a night that they don't have anything going, she said any time, you know, we'll there's have, certain. You well, know, times you ever, can they you have ever call me? Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm really, I, I think I, you know, it's really too much for my house. I mean, there's 12 or 13 on their team, and the word gets out easily. A 50 to 100 would probably show up all the, all the whole week. And so then we're, we might be getting the Des Moines Field House on Sunday, which holds two or three hundred. Right. And so, uh, you know, a lot of these people are paying their own ways out here. You know, they just really want to come. But I need housing. 
you know, I might be able to put a, a, a young guy, you know, I'm hoping Sharon play for Blake to sell some houses so they can get another place in that, that's free up a room in my, free up a lot in my house. <laughs> but, uh, but I don't know what God's doing there, so I just, God knows. That's right. But, uh, thank you, Jesus. Just be quiet. Just, just be still. Jerry, you had something you wanted to share. Just for me. Yeah. Are we, Whatever that was on your heart, Jerry. Yeah, just, we, are we kind of front, done with the worship then, Mike? Yeah, yeah we'll come back at the end. I just want okay. to listen. Yeah, I, I did have something to share. <clears throat> Mike, Mike uh, was talking about the uh, the bread and the wine that has been showing up over at Terry's. And uh, some, Joe, I don't think you know about that. You were gone when this was all going on. And uh, but like Mike was saying, uh, bread started showing up uh, the night that Ben and Nicole were here, and uh, and uh, when they went back to Terry's, there were a couple of, as Mike was saying, a couple of loaves of bread uh, on, on the chairs. And since that time, um, uh, uh, more loaves of bread have sh shown up, and then wine started showing up because they put bottles of uh, Dasani water. You, how many have seen it on the internet? Most of you probably seen that. Yeah. Right? We'll go ahead. And uh, so you, yeah, you might want to put that up, Mike. I'll and put one of them on. I'm not put, I'll just put yeah, one. Yeah, put, put one of them up. Yeah, okay, that's good. And uh, anyway, uh, so so. Uh, okay, so this morning we got up, and we had left this one that much in, if you guys remember, and this with this much in, and look what it is now. It's full. It's been multiplying. And this is full now. I have a hunch that it's actually Dasani. And <laughs> Terry asked me why Arrowhead got it. And I see but he says Dasani model right here. I, I, I said that Arrowhead was hanging out with Dasani, so I'll just say about that. But. I, want, I want the Bible reference for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this, this has one. been sitting here for a couple of days. Yep, and they go, again, you'll uh, notice they're still water. sealed. Yep, they're, they're both sealed. sealed. So here, you take this one. He hasn't opened it yet. And you'll take that one. Okay. That figures. You'll take this one. I'll take that one. I don't care. What do we do? We're going to open them up. Oh! Okay. Let's so, 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 so. yeah. yeah, open this one up. We're going, well, we're going to take this. Okay. So, so, Jerry, you tasted it? Yeah, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Did you hear that crack? Did you just hear that crack? Everybody oh. heard that crack. I didn't know the sun made that grape juice. And you notice that the label is now... We'll have, we'll have that here probably next now. Friday, hopefully, with wine and bread. Oh, but until, until now. Okay. He, she didn't tell the sun, I didn't know you guys made wine. And it just popped up. Oh, okay. that's God. It has that been opened. It has now been opened. It was not open before you heard the crack. Smell it. Oh, my. Can we smell it over the internet? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Be By faith, you can. By faith, you can. That's over pretty That's much. Okay, so. hey, Mike, I want you to go back about here. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? I want you to go back about here. Uh, back a little more. Okay, press and start. I don't think it's all. Oh, no, back a little more. I can't get your fingers about, about 40. For a couple of days. Yep, about 30. And go. About Bible 30. Reference. Okay, stop it right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go back. Go back. Back, back, back. I want Stop it right there. Leave it right there. Stop it right there. Okay, so uh, a week ago Monday, uh, uh, Glenn had the uh, the one bottle with the red red that showed up there, and so I we don't live that far from it, you know. So I called him up that afternoon, and I said, hey. Uh, we'd like to come over and maybe have communion with you. He said, wait, we've been looking for somebody to have communion with. You didn't call me up. <laughs> uh, so, Mel and I went over there and we had uh, we had communion with uh, uh, some of the bread that had shown up there and the red wine. And I will tell you, that red wine is wonderful. Does it, it taste like wine or grape? Oh, yeah, it tastes like wine. It doesn't sweet, taste like, sweet. 
Um, I'm not a connoisseur of wine, but it, I can't really say sweet, but all I can tell you was really good, okay? And uh, uh, so um, then, um, and so, so much has been happening here, so they, um, uh, I guess they put, uh, then uh, a day or two later, maybe it's a couple days later, then white wine showed up, a bottle of the water, instead of turning red, turned to kind of yellow, and uh, yellowish. And, and no, I want you to leave well, that back just, there where that was. I'm it's important. This, I'm doing this because the internet, for Facebook. Hey, shits. Something Lord, Jerry. Jerry, just, I do just, remember it. No, this is important. Uh, that video frame is important. When I say it's important, I mean it's important. So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll go on and, and Mike can maybe get it back there. Anyway, so um, uh, so then they had the white wine, and uh, so, you know, I thought, I'd like to see what that's like. So we went over there, I can't remember now, uh, let's see, I guess, I guess it was, I guess it was Monday. We went over there Monday, this one, this past Monday, and we had communion with the white wine. And it's very good as well. I actually prefer the red, but uh, but the white is very nice, very 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 nice. And uh, and at that time, I think about twelve lows, twelve lows had appeared, twelve lows, and three of them at that point had gems in them. And Terry had uh, a little plastic bag uh, with the gems that had come in each loaf, and they had three bags and. And they were typical of the gems that we find here when they come. You know, there wasn't anything really significantly different from, from those gems. Okay. So then, um, uh, last night we decided we, we, we wanted to go over there and we had communion again with the you white You should have wine. called me. I told Glenn I wanted to come over. Was, was, was Jeff there? Jeff, uh, no. Uh, you mean, mean, uh, I mean Jeff Gordon Jensen? Gordon Jensen. No, he wasn't there. He was. He came in today, actually. Anyway, um, so we we went over and uh, and he showed me where they had another bottle of the red wine that was sealed up that you just saw here a minute ago. That was sealed that they cracked it today. This is just today they put on here. <clears throat> okay, so they they had communion with Gordon Jensen this morning. Or this at sometime today. Anyway, uh, now are we going back to where uh, that that frame went? Well, maybe not. Well, we okay, we never mind. Never mind. Uh, so, so uh, last night when we went over there, I had a purpose. <coughs> last so, night when we went okay, over there. Okay, so this morning we got up. <laughs> and the problem is I got you on Ustream too, so it's going to get more. That's okay, ahead. Mike. That's, okay. That's all right. Don't worry about it. But if you, as long as you're there, okay, now freeze it right there. Okay, just stop it right there. So, so last night we went over there, and um, uh, as I said, we, we, we had, had communion, uh, but I had a purpose, too. Before we went, I brought a couple of bottles with me. One I filled up with, uh, 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 it's, I think it's this one behind here. I filled it up with water from our house. It had been open. I just filled up with water. And then I brought an empty bottle. This one right here, this arrowhead bottle. Okay? <clears throat> and um, so uh, we had communion. And then we, I, so with the arrowhead bottle that was empty, we took a little bit of the wine that was left, the white wine, and Terry poured in about a half an inch or so of the wine. And they said they would call me if um, if there was any change in, in anything. Um, uh, we actually, I actually bought another bottle. I thought it was water, but it turns out it was like it had a pear flavor, and it was slightly yellow too. But so we couldn't use that as, as a kind of a test sort of thing. But anyway, we we had uh, I had this one and had had the other one. So Glenn called me this morning, and he said, "Hey, your Arrowhead bottle filled up with." wine. And I said, whoa, that is good. And that was exciting. And he said, yeah, you need to come over and get it. So this afternoon... So you got the one at home? Uh, huh? You got the one at home? The, 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 this one, I went over and picked it up. 
How and come you bring it tonight? It tonight? Why didn't I bring, bring it tonight? Yeah. Or did you? Well, I don't know. Why didn't I bring it tonight? Whoa! Jerry! And I got some bread left from last week. Well, will you just, hey, uh, Mike, would you just come and sit down and oh, listen? Well, come. <laughs> He's not very obedient. He's going to wine and dine me tonight. Hallelujah. Sure. So I, I don't know if you can see it. It's, it's, it's a little yellow. I had a taste of it this afternoon, and it is wine. And it's the same wine. It tastes exactly like the wine we had last night. Okay? And you notice it didn't fill up to the top. I kind of thought of, you know, I kind of hope it filled up. But anyway, it filled up to about here. And the wine that they had a little left of, that you know, she, like I said, she had a little left. She poured a part of it in here about this much. And their bottle filled up about the same level with white wine okay so they got a refill and i got a fill bring this over fill the gallon <laughs> they put them in that gallon there and see if it fills up jerry <laughs> uh, so so uh you know you can't really you can't really what are you going to do with just the wine if you don't you said you have some bread i got one it'll oh, yeah you let glenn give you some good glenn's got i don't mind I, 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 I just, oh here now, I let me, thought I'd come prepared here. Let me get this on camera. Now, this is a loaf of bread that showed up supernatural. We've had, what, seven, he's had 17 loaves of bread? He's had 17 wow. loaves of then bread. Dan, then Dan and Nicole, the first ones who ever noticed the bread, had two show up this week on our keyboards back in Wichita. Oh, wow. So yeah. it's been showed up at their house this last week. Broken. So this bread... So they have gemstones in it and gold nuggets? We, we don't know if they're gemstones. Could have gold in. nuggets. Most of them do not have, okay? Most do not. They may be one out of... One out of five or six, maybe have gemstone. So this is, um, I, I don't know what kind of bread this is. We'll find out. Let me and, smell it. Let me uh, smell so last it. night when we had communion, we had a rosemary, you know, like a, uh, they had one bread with rosemary, and another one which had garlic bread, and there were the garlics in there. Even, even the garlic was in there, and it was really good. Uh, so Let's wish for cheesy sourdough. <laughs> you can you can put your request in and oh uh, I like sourdough I like sourdough myself so Glenn wanted hey Mike Glenn wanted to have, surprise you with the bread <laughs> and so last night actually you know he when I first went over there he said I want to give bread and wine to Mike well when we left last night I mean he didn't he didn't give me the wine he, and and um, I thought no oh, I really would like wine for tonight so we're gonna have communion for this bread. And with this wine, and I think everybody's going to enjoy that. So, um, and I, uh, I asked Sharon to get the little wine cups, and uh, maybe um, Anna, could you get those, honey? The wine, there's wine, there are wine cups up where the uh, can, um, the tr metal tray is. I put them right up there. So maybe we could get somebody, uh, Debbie. Uh, maybe you could, I could ask you to fill fill up the little wine cups. And, but what I also want to do is, I want you to leave at least at least this much in the bottle. I'm just putting a tiny bit in. That's fine. Because I'm counting. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. I'll leave it up to you. Yeah. I'll leave it up to you. Those the little community cups. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, I want a big cup. I want I'm with Carrie. I want Carrie. Don't get any. Want big cups. I want that gallon jug. Three gets nothing. Yeah, there you go, Kerry. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, so um, I, you know, I can. So rip it open, Jer. No, I think what. Rip on the camera. I kind of pass it around in front of the camera. Should we do that? Break yeah. it open. Yeah. Anyway, in the camera. All right, so we're gonna do this in front of the camera. Just we'll see. Wait, hang, hang on, just a second. Oh, I'm getting some tight. Come on, people. Oh, you, are you Mike's trying, trying to find the soundtrack for us? On. How many are on there now, uh, Sean? Uh, we got what? Two, three. We got five. Five. Okay. So I'm going to give a close-up of the bread. I, I can uh, zoom in to you if okay. you want to step back. Step back? Okay. If you want. Get comfortable, Jerry. Okay. And I want to just say about the bread, um, every single loaf, uh, I've asked Glenn about this, every single loaf is different in size, shape, taste. Um, everyone's different. The first one that Glenn gave to Mike was about, oh, about maybe seven inches round and you know kind of, and round like that, but they're all different. And they've had 17 show up, and that's in about 20 days. So that's almost one a day. And what he, are they doing? Are they eating it? Well, they they're they're eating some of it and giving a lot a lot of it away. To who? I don't know. 
Here's one of them right here. <laughs> okay, but they are eating a lot because they're having different people coming over for communion. And when when we have communion, we have big chunks. Yeah. Over there. Over there. Now big we're chunks. <laughs> okay, so so. Carrie, wow. Carrie, Carrie, Carrie's into a big chunk. I'm not you're into wafers. I you're not into wafers. Now. Okay. No. The word's so, spreading. We're at seven now, Jerry. We're up to seven. That's because I'm doing my job. <laughs> my the job internet Facebook, is a getting, buzz. Getting people on here. Wow. So for those that are just joining, we're, we're um, uh, talking about the bread that's been showing up in Glenn and Terry Smith's oh. house and three loads in their car. Um, and let's see, they've had one, two, three, it's either four or five um, that have shown up on a red cloth. Mike, where's that red cloth that you had? Uh, isn't it in there? No. I don't know who it's keeps gone. taking the cloth. Um, there's a red cloth that it... That it um, Last yeah, time later. Got I got so we know where that thing is. Wife, she keeps taking it out of the bank. Yeah, anyway, um, it showed up in a red cloth about such and such di uh, size. Beautiful. Had a kind of a little, uh, mm, what would you say, uh, sort of a pattern. How would you say that, Carrie? You saw it. Anyway... Um, uh, so we, as I said earlier, three of the lows have shown up with the gemstones in them, typical size gemstones that we get here, and so we don't know if there's any in here. They're the losing the crowd. The chances We're at are six now. Uh oh well, that's, <laughs> that's okay. So we don't know if there's if there are gemstones here. The likelihood, percentage-wise, you know, one out of five or six lows are having gemstones. So the likelihood is probably not, but we'll see. Are we ready? Well, praise ready. God. I just want those that I'm are on. Let, I'm gonna let Mike break says, it. Open. Those that are on Facebook, just well, thank you for joining us. This, 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 it just turned how many under seven, right? Six. Oh, we're losing people. But this is bread that showed up from heaven. We haven't broke. Some of these have had gemstones. Some of the bread that shows up with Fred Williams, we've actually had bread with gold leaf. When you broke it open, there's gold and and even pearls and pearls and Fred Williams and his. The, about 10 or 12 of them are coming out the last week of August to join us for a series of from meetings. From the Carolinas? From the Carolinas, North, North Carolina, and from Atlanta. There are a whole bunch of them. They're coming from a couple, about three different states. We're having a week of glory meetings the last week of August. Oh. And venues will be, we want to do some here, but I don't know what we're doing them all because there'll be too many people showing up, I think. So, Father, your Bible says you give thanks and you broke bread and you multiplied the bread. Father, you had not bread left over for four, for, for you know baskets left over when you fed the four thousand yes. and the five thousand. You know the same God that multiplied the bread back then, the loaves and the fishes, is the same God that's multiplying this bread here. And some of the bread that should have been another meeting has been le has been unleavened. This is leaven. You now, just a quick word. You know when Jesus died, you know when he died on the cross, he used unleavened bread. But when they celebrated the Feast of Pentecost, which was the birth of the church, they used leavened bread in that feast because there's still leaven in the church. But when they celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, the last day feast when God's come back for a bride made ready, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Day of Atonement, they use, they use unleavened bread. And so God's still trying to get the leaven out of the church, I guess. But yeah, good stuff. So, Lord, we, we just want to thank you for, you for your word tonight. We just thank you for your bread from heaven. Lord, your word says, let you, let you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. You do not have life within you. In fact, let's just, uh, let's just turn to John 6 for a second. I just want to, you know, I, I'm, I'm one of those guys that's more literal. Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood. Nowhere in the Bible does it say it's a symbol, a memorial, an emblem. Jesus just says it is. And I don't know how people get away with saying it's not, but 90% of the church... Says it's not his body and blood, but my Bible says it is. So hallelujah, <laughs> glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to read a couple of passages of Scripture out of John right here, and uh, Jesus says this. And John, I'll start with John six twenty six. Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. How many of those enough loaves to here to fill some of us? But, but. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for food which endures eternal life, which the Son of Man shall give to you. For on him the Father, even God, has set a seal. They said therefore to him, What shall we do, that we may work the works of God? And Jesus said, The work of God, that you believe in him who has, who has sent. You know, I believe 
How many know with God all things are possible? I just believe God can do whatever He wants, whenever He wants to do it. Because, you know what, you cannot put God in a box. I know a lot of churches want to say what God can and cannot do. But you know what, I, I, I like childlike faith. I, I love childlike faith. And God, we just ask You to release Your glory tonight, God. I just ask that the breath begin to multiply in every on our house and the houses of the people here there tonight. But we just pray for supernatural manifestations, God, because it's, it's all about You, Jesus. It's Your bread that was broken. It was Your body that was broken. Then the Word of the God, that You believe in Him who we sin. And they said, therefore, to Him, What then do You do for a sign? that we may see and believe you. What work do you perform? Our fathers ain't man in the wilderness that is written. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. You know what? This is also bread out of heaven to eat. The same God who gave bread out of heaven back in the wilderness for 40 years is the same God that's given bread today. The same God that multiplied the loaves and fishes is the same God that's given bread today. You know, the first time I ever had bread from heaven was on my birthday on July... Uh, on June 12th when I turned 50 years old. I don't like gold I'll show it with Joshua Mills, but the Byerlys came, you know, an older couple that were having man manifest in their Bible, and I, that, that man happened to be unleavened bread, I believe. And so, what, seven years ago? Mark? That was, a, no, was nine years ago. Ooh. So nine years ago was the first time I ever had bread from heaven. So God's been doing this for a while in, you know, all over the world. Years. But truly, truly, I say to you, it's not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father who gives the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. You know, Jesus is that true bread. Then they said therefore to Him, Lord, ever give us this bread. And Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Not only is Jesus the bread of life, but He's given us bread, His bread, supernaturally. However, however it shows up, I do not know. You know, just like the guy in John 9, how he got healed. He said, whether it was Son of God or Jesus, I do not know. I just, I just know I was blind, but now I see. I just know there's where there was no bread that's showing up. <laughs> how it gets there, I do not know. Some, God doing His thing. Maybe God sends an angel you know, to a bakery and buys it. And you know, you know. Delivers it to well, we know Elijah had, you know, he had cake from heaven. He had angel food cake. You know, that was what angel. And Elijah first said, "That's how they got angel food cake." And when Elijah got ate the cake, so. You know, I, I'm Italian, so you know, my favorite job was loaves and fishes, you know. And so, I am the bread of life. He comes down to me, shall not hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and do not believe. I tell you what, a lot of people, they're not going to believe God is doing this. A lot of people will not believe that, that God is doing this. And all the Father gives me shall come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of Him who sent me. And this is the will of Him who sent me, that all that He has given me, I lose nothing, but I will raise Him up on the last day. For this is my Father, that everyone who beholds a Son and believes in Him may have eternal life. And I myself will raise them up in the last days. You know, I'm going to skip a few verses. Jesus goes down later on and says... Verse uh, 49, Your fathers had man in the wilderness, and they're dead. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven, so that you may eat and not die. I am the living bread. Jesus is that bread. This is just bread from heaven, but Jesus is that bread of life. He's the one we eat. When we partake communion, Jesus says in, in, in the Gospels and 1 Corinthians, He says, This is my body. This is my blood. As often as you do this, do in remembrance of me. He never said it was a symbol. He never said it was an emblem. He said, This is my body. I don't know what part this is. People don't understand why it's an emblem or a symbol. He just said it is. According to your faith, be it what? Unto you. Done unto you. If you don't have faith, it's never going to happen. And I believe a reason we don't see a lot of miracles in the church with communion right now. Jesus says some of you are dead and sick among you and some, you know, I believe the same. So right now, Lord, we just cleanse ourselves before we go. Yes, Lord, Lord, just wash me from all impurities yes, and all Lord. thoughts and attitudes, deeds and gestures and things that we just say we want you to change by your grace and mercy. Amen. Father, I ask as we have this bread from heaven and this wine from heaven that's floated supernaturally tonight, God. 
I ask God that this bread would bring healing in my body. Because by your stripes I've been made healed. And by your blood I was set free. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. I pray as we have the wine, God, there'd be just things that we might be stuck in our own personal soul life. Tonight there'd be deliverance. Tonight there'd bring healing and transformation. But right now we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. I'm the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. The bread also I give for the life of the world, which is my flesh. And the Jews therefore began to argue with one another, saying, How can this man give us flesh to eat? You know, they said, How can he give us flesh to eat? But the Jews therefore began to argue with one another, How can this man give us flesh to eat? Jesus therefore said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat him out the flesh of the Son of Man. Now Jesus is that. He's given this as a type of His body and blood. Not, but He says it is. Truly I say, unless you eat My flesh of the Son of Man and drink in My blood, you will not have life within yourselves. He who eats My flesh and drinks My blood has eternal life. Now raise them up on the last days. That's why it's important as often as you do this. I believe it's important to have communion often from heaven. For My flesh is true food and My blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and, live, and as I live because of the Father, he who eats me, he also shall live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Jesus and supernatural loaves of bread. Not as the fathers ate and died in, like in the wilderness, he who eats this bread shall live forever. You know, John 6, 66, it says, This was a difficult saying. As a result, many of His disciples withdrew and walked with Him no more. That's John 6, 66. You know, many of them didn't follow Him. Some of you are not going to believe. You know, Mike's nuts. This, you guys are goofy, you know. But you know what Jesus says? Can do what, how many know God can do what He wants? So, hey. Father, tonight, Sean, go ahead. Just, you know, Why, just, I get just... the, you know, why don't you just speak to oh. the camera? I was just wondering, as a church, if we complained enough like the Israelites in the wilderness did that we could get God to supernaturally give us meat as well. Quail. Some quail. Some quail. Should we aim a little higher? You know, than that? Pheasant? Pheasants? Pheasants? Some pheasants. You know, give us, if, if ducks show up, we can all quack up. <laughs> uh, porterhouse steak. A quarter. Oh, yeah. exact, that's the kind of thinking we there's, need on this table. <laughs> well, Not he gave us well. manna, but you know, there's manna waffles, manna cotti. If it's Italian, it's manna cotti, so you know, it's all good stuff. Manna but, raviolis. Um, there you go. How many, know God's, how many know God has a sense of humor? God does have a sense of humor. He has a sense of humor. Oh. God is a God of joy. He's a God of humor. And, and Jerry, let me see. Hey, Jerry, here, here's a... Uh, and this is actually the, the wine here that it has showed up too. We just put it in the communion cups. So the, the wine showed up from heaven supernaturally, and, and so did the loaves of bread. And so, uh, thank you, Father God. You hold so, Mike, uh, why don't you uh, show the camera, get close to the camera, just in case there's a gemstone in there that, you know, break it Break, 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 it, break it open. Top down. Break it open and. Ah! I don't think there's any gemstones in this one. And I don't see any. So let's just let everybody no, Father, pull apart we'll a pull, yeah, pull, I'll, pull I'll, their I'll, own. I'll bring here, here, Sean. You can pass that that way, and I'll take a piece and yeah. pass it. Here, Mark. How are we breaking bread here? And Carol, those that want to grab some communion. Yeah. Honey, can you break that off, or you want me to? Just take a bite off it, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I got yours, honey. I'll hold on to it. I'm going to kitchen. Is that a gem? You know, and some of the wine that showed up has been different color. Some is red wine, some is white wine. I think the three or four different bottles of wine that should have all been different. Sourdough. I know, without the cheese. Is it? It's sourdough. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be eating yet. I'm not eating, I'm sniffing. You gotta be the baker's dozen. It does smell sourdough, yeah. Yeah, it's sourdough. I love sourdough. I want the most, Jerry. I want the most. I want the most. I want the most. I want the most. It'll multiply in your cup, Carrie, if you have enough faith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the whole world. Oh, I got a whole world. Thank you, brother. Okay. <clears throat> 
Thank you much. Uh, I'm going to be like Carrie. Oops, we've got a full of one. Okay, can you write these down here, please? Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Has everybody got one? You got yeah, one? we're good now. How is how he got one? Yep. You got one huh? He does. Okay. He does. Well, Father, we thank you, Lord. You want some bread? If you need a healing in your body right now, just reach out for healing. Even on the internet, just ask God for it to multiply in your house. And just do it by faith, and God can do it. Lord, we just thank you for this bread that was broken for us, Father. As often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of you. And it says, by your stripes, by your body, we've been healed in Jesus' name. I need Smells like real wine. Does not smell like grape juice. For all the people I think it was grape juice, it doesn't smell like grape juice. It smells like real wine. Definitely. Tastes like real wine. So, Lord, right now, we just thank you for your blood that was shed for us. Father, right now, just deliver all of us from everything, anything that's holding us back. God, we just ask for forgiveness right now. Set us free. Set us free. Lord, make us your bride without spot or wrinkle in Jesus' name. Yeah, we'll give you some okay. to take tonight. Okay. Thank you, Father. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome what God is doing? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Uh, uh, Sean just, oh, he's eating, but we know we had, Sean was his first time. Mike was with him, went down to the Godwin Bill on Sunday. I think that day there was about, in the morning session, when we were there, we had about 20 come to Christ, something like that, 15 or 20. But I think overall, there's probably a 150, 200 saved at the Godmobile. I know Sue Wilson and Linda Meisner at the Netherbooth. They had over 170 kids come to Christ last weekend. I know God is good. And God, God is moving by His Spirit in a mighty way. Howie, you want to come pray for the offering, brother? Did you share anything in your heart? Brother Howie, come on up here, Howie. I know he's tired. And you can get the blood flowing. We'll get Howie just to stand up. Hallelujah. So if you make out a check tonight, you can get you guys can give online uh, through my father's house ministries.com. My father's house ministries.com. There's a PayPal or there's an address there if you ever want to mail something in. We are tax deductible. Share share a little bit this week, Howie, and what's on your heart and just um, this week just busy week, working hard. Uh, the Lord's just just real gracious toward us, toward the company and the business and we're just thankful, just continually giving thanks to Him. For apart from him, apart from Him, we have no good thing. So, Lord, we just thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your mercy toward us, Lord. I just pray a blessing upon Father's House Ministry, Lord. Bless it with a hundredfold, O God. We just thank you and we worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise you, God. You pass that around, how we? Someone put some money in there, hopefully pay some bills. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And they'll just be passed around. Sean, do you want to give a little testimony about the Godmobile Bill and how that works? Sure. What do you want me to start? You just share what's on your heart, I brother. I'll just share what's on my heart about the Godmobile. Bill. Well, as Mike said, it was my first time. Um, it was good stuff. I wasn't sure what to expect down there um, but yeah we walked down there was a lot of other presence of God people out promoting Jesus um, we saw quite a few people it was great to see the different kind of walks of life that would come up and getting to share testimony um, got to pray for some people for the infilling of the Holy Spirit which I feel is very key to the Christian walk because Without the Holy Spirit, you have religion. But with the Holy Spirit, you have relationship, which is the foundation of all Christian faith. So that was awesome. Um, yeah. Oh, we got um, accosted by the, uh, the militant uh, Jesus was black fringe of Christianity. That was fun. I got to tell my best joke for that. Oh, yeah. Mike should give his testimony on that. And... Uh, 
met some people. What else? Yeah, about 20 people made a confession of faith. We hope that they continue with it. And good times were had by all. I got a fizzy drink and a jug for 10 bucks. Quite a deal. Uh, yeah, God is good. And that is my testimony of the Godmobile. Oh, then we went out for macaroni and cheeseburgers afterwards with ram, which was delicious. And yeah. Go God. That's awesome. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm going to let me just turn that screen off. How many have many you been praying for Israel right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess I'll turn it back on. I forgot that. I'm not, you know, it's really important that we pray for Israel, what's going on. And on my, on my heart this week, I'll probably show something in a minute, but how many, how many are you familiar with Psalm 83 here in this room? Anybody here familiar with Psalm 83? What does it say? Psalm 83. Uh, just going to read it, uh, the first, especially the first eight verses. It says, God is employed to confound his enemies. Father, right now, we just thank you for this word. O oh God, do not remain quiet. Do not be silent, O oh God. Do not be still. For behold, thine enemies make an uproar. How many knows an uproar of enemies right now against Israel? You know, it's all over the world. There's an uproar. You know, a lot of anti-Semitism going on. You've got your skinheads. You've got your communists. You've got your Nazi Aryan race people. A lot of people do not, hate, do not like Israel. And it seems like there's always an anti-Semitic spirit that rises up in a lot of people. Against you. What for? What's the difference between the Jews and the Italians and the, the Polish? You know, I mean, but it's something there's always an anti Semitic spirit. Because how many know the devil hates two groups of people? He hates the Jews and the Christians. Mm -hmm. So there's always an attack on, on Christians. You go to school right now, kids are getting, you know, chastised for reading the Bible in school. I can't tell you how many things I get, I read on the internet or hear about. What about when they read Harry Potter? That's a witchcraft religion. That should be forbidden in the schools. That's if right. they cannot read the Bible, they should not be able to read Harry Potter. Yep. Or anything right. about the, the Native Americans' religion with totem poles. That's all religion. Mm -hmm. When they teach there is no God, that's a religion. When they teach evolution, that, that's a religion in itself. Of humanism. A religion is just a system of beliefs. So we have a diabolical America is in trouble. America is in trouble. I'm going to read two passages of Scripture, one here, one Amos. But it goes on and says, uh, For behold, the enemies make an uproar, and those who hate thee have exalted themselves. How many of Hamas and Muslims exalt themselves? Yeah. They they're proudful, arrogant people. They exalt themselves, and they got one goal, to kill the Jewish people. Now, I like what Netanyahu said. I'm probably going to say it wrong, but he says, you know, we use our military weapons to protect our people, but Hamas, you use your you use your people to protect your weapons. Yep. You use your people to protect. They, they surround their weapons with people, and so when Israel attacks, their people get killed because that's what Hamas does. It's evil. It's evil. Islam is evil. It's an antichrist spirit. It's it's against Christ. It's against Christ being the Son of God. They make shrewd plans. They, they exalted themselves. They make shrewd plans against my people. Are, are they planning all the time? Iran, Iraq, Pal Palestine, Turkey, all the Muslim nations are planning all the time how to do what? Destroy Israel. Destroy Israel. They'll wipe them off the face of, of the earth. And this is what's going on right now. That same spirit. They make a shrewd plan. They plan against my people. They conspire together against thy treasured ones. Against the treasured one also means your hidden ones. You know what? There's two treasured peoples. Though Israel is the apple of God's eye. But those that come to Jesus through faith in the seed of Abraham to Christ is also God's special treasured people. And you see a retaliation. Obama is against Christians. Don't kid yourself. He'll say one thing, but he goes and kisses the king of Saudi Arabia. He goes and he'll do political things to make himself look good against Hamas sometimes. But at the core, he, there's a spirit of Antichrist it's running through that man. They have said, come, but we need to pray for him. We need to pray for salvation because how we know God can save anybody? So we do need to pray for Obama and pray for salvation. 
But it says, they have said, come and let us wipe out a nation. Come and let us what? Come. This is exactly what's going on right now in Israel. It's been going on it went on all the time. Let's go wipe out Israel. The Babylonian captivity when they became a nation in 48. And then they raised back up. Let's go wipe out Israel. And Israel is bent over backwards to give them the, the Gaza Strip. Bent over backwards. That's right. All the Jews moved out of the Gaza Strip. It was their buffer zone. Now they use that Gaza Strip to, 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 to launch rockets and missiles into Israel. And remember, 8,000 were expelled out of Gaza Strip? Yeah, and when, and, and when George Bush uh, Jr. Made, went land for peace, they, the 8,000 people got displaced out of the Gaza Strip back in 19... Whatever no, it was. No, 2001 or 2005, Katrina. Two, right, right, 2005. I think it was Katrina. Because we, because we, we well, forced we, them to yeah, do We that. forced them to leave it, Gaza Strip. Bush did. They left. All the Hamas and all the Palestinians, all the Muslims were rejoicing. But you know, that's when Hurricane Katrina was forming right on the Gulf of Mexico. Within 24 hours after we kicked out 8,000 Jews, with 800,000 displaced out of Katrina, a hundredfold judgment came against America. That's happened over 50 times. Every time. Bush Jr., Sr., Clinton, Obama have made a, a, a land for peace treaty. That's when 9-11 hit. Colin Powell was on his way to Israel for a peace treaty. He had to turn around and come back home. You know, when the perfect storm hit back in 1991, that's when President Bush uh, Sr. made the first peace treaty in his house. That, that's when the perfect storm came. There's, they called the perfect storm that over 150, 30 mile an hour winds. But a 30 foot wave hit President Bush Sr.'s house at Kitty Bumpport and did over, I think, a million dollars of damage. You know, we have not, and it's been over 50 times. The Northwest earthquake was on one of those days. Five or ten of the worst tornado days came within 24 hours of Land for Peace. And several different hurricanes and the same Fires, event. And Fires natural disasters. And, and, you know, all these things are going on because we've turned our backs as a nation on Israel. Jesus says, if you divide Israel, in, not only in Joel, but in Amos 5, and then Joel 3, he says, if you divide Israel, I will divide your land. And right now we got the Madrid up. The, the Madrid fault line over by Tennessee and Memphis. And the, the Memphis is taken out of the Egyptian God, right out of Memphis, out of, the, out of Egypt. So that Egyptian God is rising up out of Memphis. But, but there's been, the, the, Tennessee is one of the five states right now, I watched the thing on it yesterday, that, that's prone for earthquakes. That's right where the fault line is. They've been having earthquakes here the last five, eight years off the chart. And it's unheard of. Because God says, if you divide my land, I, I believe there would be an earthquake from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up the Mississippi River line. And when that happened in 1812, they had eight, nine-point earthquakes. They had two or three eight-point earthquakes in that three, in that we watched a special on that. That made the river run backwards upstream. Bells were ringing for a thousand miles, church bells, when that earthquake came. And, and it was, they, they say it was, up to, I believe, uh, I'd have to go back and check, but there's like a nine-point earthquake, but they had two that were eight or nine point during that few week time. When the Miss that's when the Mississippi changed its course. And so what happened in 1812 was a foreshadow of what's going to happen again to America. Except now there's people living there. There's great populations all through that area. Millions could die if we actually split Israel. There's a conspiracy in our own government to divide Israel. That's why we need to be praying for you, praying. But it says, They have come to let us wipe them out as a nation, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. Isn't that what they're trying to do? For they have conspired together with one mind. You know what? You can't get those Muslims to agree on anything. But when it's against Israel, they all come together. They're killing off one another. Every faction, you go to Iran, why is there war in Iraq? Because you got the three different factions of Muslims trying to kill each other. The only thing that the Muslims can unite on is killing Israel. Everything else, they're against one another. Because it's a spirit of Antichrist, a spirit of murder, a spirit of hate, Indian strife. They can't get along with one another. 
you have one, one common denominator, take out Israel. That's the only common denom not denominator Muslims have all over the world, is take out Israel. And then it says, Come, let us wipe them out as a nation, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. For they conspired together with one mind. And th listen, against thee, and against thee do they make a covenant. A covenant is only broken by what? Death. If you make a covenant, a marriage covenant should only be broken by death. That's but right. people do it anyway, you know. And so, but a real covenant is only broken by death, according to Romans 7, you know. And so, against thee do they make a covenant. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites. You know, Edom's all Saudi Arabia. It's all Iran. It's all Iraq. You, you've, got, you've got the tents of Edom. You've got the Ishmaelites. You've got the Moabites. You, you, you got the Hagarites, which are Hagar, her descendants. So it's all these Muslim nations. I can show you a map in a minute if we want on a, a talk on where they just show you all these different groups in the, that I'm talking about. But they got Gibel and Ammon and Amalites and Philistia, which is, which is the Palestinians, which is the Philistines. That's where Goliath came out of. That giant's rising up its head again. And the Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre, Tyre's right where the Gaza Strip is. It's right, I believe Tyre's north. right by, just north, north of the Gaza north. Strip. But that whole region. And as Syria has joined with them, they have become, they have become a help to the children of Lot. Where Lot who are Lot's kids come? They came from incest. The Moabites and the Ammonites came when they got when they got their they got them drunk, his two daughters, and out of that came the Moabites and the Ammonites, the descendants of Lot, which is where the Muslims come from, along with Hagar, and and so this whole thing mm -hmm. is what we see rising up right now against uh, Israel. Uh, and I'm just going to stop and just pray for a minute. It's just uh, Father God, right now, Father. This is a true word, Father. Though all, all the world is conspiring against Israel, Father. All the Muslim nations of the world, they're only, they can only agree on one thing, wipe out Israel and, and America, which is Satan and the, and, the, and the true believers in Jesus Christ. Father, I ask right now, Father, you intervene for Israel. Lord, they've got that dome, the iron dome, but God, you're their shield. You're their shield. You're the protector and the glory of their land, Father. It says you put a shield over a city, Father. We ask that very few Jews would get killed, Father. Lord, I, I, Lord, I pray for the Hamas, but Father, it says you're going to remove the wicked from the land in one day. It says you remove the wicked. Not that the Jews are born again. But Father, I just pray, Father, Lord, that you do what you're going to do over there. We pray for the rebirth of Judah that would come out of this father. Our friend Henry talks about there'll be a rebirth of Judah. We saw Israel in 48, Jerusalem in 67. Now we've got these blood moons coming. That there that there'll be a rebirth of Judah and a rebirth of praise and worship in your church right now, Father. Oh Shiki Andari Ah Shiki Andari Ah. Supposed to go to I wanna I wanna read those two verses about splitting Israel. One's in how many know that verse in Joel about splitting it? I just want to tell you this is in the Bible. Joel 3, 3, it says right this in verse 2. I will gather all the nations and bring them to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which means the valley of decision. And there I enter into judgment with them there, on behalf of my people and my inheritance Israel, when they have scattered among the nations, and they have divided up my land. God says they have divided up my land. When you come against Israel, you're coming against the apple of God's eye. He says in the He says in the book of uh, the book of Amos. If I can find it right here, I think it's in chapter. I didn't mark it, so Lord, where is it? On the S C. Who knows the book of Amos where he talks about dividing up the land? Uh, here it is, right here, Amos chapter seven, verse seventeen. Uh, you know, I never saw this first until recently. I was reading a book or something. I go, man, I didn't even know that book was in there. But it says the same thing. I'm going to back up to verse 14. And Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I'm not a prophet, nor am I a son of a prophet, for I'm a herdsman and the grower's sycamore tree figs. For the Lord took me from following the flocks of the Lord and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. And now hear the word of the Lord. You are saying, You shall not prophesy against Israel, nor shall you speak against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus said the Lord, 
your wife will become a harlot. In the cities, your sons and your daughters will fall by the sword. And your land will be parceled up by a measuring line. But they parceled up all Israel. No Jews lived in that land for 2,500 years. It was no longer called Israel. Israel was not a nation for 2,500 years. From the Babylonian captivity until 1948, it was not, the land was parceled up. It says you'll be parceled up by a measuring line. You and yourselves will die upon unclean soil. They're all scattered abroad in the Assyrian and Babylonian captivity. However, Israel will certainly go from its land into exile. And because, di because Israel disobeyed God, God parceled up the land at one time. Mm -hmm. But now there's over, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 prophecies through Jeremiah, Ezekiel, the minor prophets, about Israel coming back to the land. And that's exactly what's going on today. Israel's returning back to its own land. And that, that's an incredible thing. Praise God. But I want to read this. this. Now this, I'm switching to signs of the times and I believe these are some of the reasons why you know we see these fires and over and, and right now and they've got nothing but worse you know so the fires have gotten seemed like a lot worse the last 20 30 40 years mm -hmm. there's been drought there's, you know why I believe in America and the world because we've turned our backs on the babies on the innocent and last year when we were praying with Pastor Joe Apostle Joe Mawiki Joe comes to me and says Mike the Lord showed me if we legalize same-sex marriage, Washington State's going to have start having the worst fires in history. And they said when the, the last year was the worst, worst, first worst fires last year in Washington State history. Here we go for round two. I tell you, it's not going to get better unless America repents and quits being Sodom and Gomorrah. God does not honor same-sex marriage. It's going to blasphemy. Maybe destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. How many know God? I like what Billy Graham says. If, if God doesn't judge America quickly, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. When yeah. he made that statement, it was probably 20 years ago. I don't even think he could imagine they would have legalized same-sex marriage when he said that 20, years, 20, 25 years ago. But we see how, how down this road of darkness America has gone. But the Word of God says in Amos 3, I'm going to skip around a little bit, in a couple of chapters of Amos, mostly 3, 4, and 5. But he says, how can two walk together, in verse 3, unless there be agreement? Does a lion growl from its den unless he captures something? Does a bird fall into a trap on the ground where there is no bait in it? Does a trap spring up from the earth when it is captured? Nothing at all. If a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people of God tremble? You know, if God begins to sound an alarm, how many Well, what happened? What was your first response when you heard about 9-11? Two trumpet buildings were shot, were blown up. What happened? I remember I was in bed. The, the, the alarm clock went off on 9-11. The alarm clock went off, and, and I, I could only hear like five seconds, and my wife went to shut it off. I said, stop it! Don't turn the alarm off. Something's wrong. I didn't even know what, but I heard a little bit. Something happened. I go, no, turn it back on. Something's wrong. She didn't discern it. She didn't know it. She didn't tune in to what I heard. And that, not even five seconds before I hit the alarm. God was saying, there's an alarm going off in America. And she's trying to turn it off. There's an alarm that went off in America. We went to church for three weeks. And we turned it off. Three weeks, the churches got filled up for three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. Just like my wife shut the alarm off, people stopped, they stopped going back to church. You know, and uh, God is again sounding the alarm. God says, if a calamity, and uh, this, this kills me. I know so many Christians, God doesn't do that. God don't send earthquakes. God don't send war. God don't send bombs. God don't send tornadoes. God don't send tsunamis. How many have heard Christians like that? Have you heard that from the, the prosperity? Especially the prosperity, bless, bless, bless. God don't do that. I'll tell you, those that say that do not know their Bible. They err from the Word of God a lot. I can show you a hundred verses in the Bible where God brings calamity and judgment. Amen. Or more, there's more than that, but I'm just... But he says, 
if calamity occurs in a city, has not the Lord done it? What, what, have you ever read this verse, you idiots in the Bible? Has not God done it? Doesn't mean we don't have some authority to stop the wind, to stop the fire, to stop the earthquake. We've done that in this church. We've done it in this city. But there's sometimes when God says, enough, see enough, the time of delay is no more. In the book of Chronicles, when they're about to go into Babylonian captivity, and, and God, over and over, even when Asa repented, God delayed, God delayed, God delayed. But there's a verse in Chronicles that says, there is no more remedy for your sin. The delays of God have been there. Well, there's a time when God says, I cannot delay this any longer. The thing is, I don't always know what those times are. And so as an intercessor, I'm standing in the gap. Mercy, mercy triumphs over God. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I'm always crying out for mercy because I don't always know the delays unless God shows up and says, stop praying that way. Stop praying. I remember when, when, when Bree Keaton went before the courts of heaven. And she says, God, can you spare the earthquake in California? And God put the gavel down and says, I will not spare the judgment that's coming to California. She was with Jesus on the throne when he put the gavel down. She says, well, God, can you have things of refuge? Can you have places of safety in California for your people? And the gavel went down, yes, I will have places of safety. I will have places of refuge. In fact, I wanted to play that by Henry Gilbert. It's a 13-minute spot. But I will have those places for my people. But some things cannot be stopped because we as a nation have spit in the face of God over and over and over again, and you and we can do it our own nature. All it's fully says in our own lives. Mike, you know, I was just thinking, if America would get down and repent and and start praying to God, yeah. He would move quicker with Israel. You'd see yeah. them then yeah. probably come to the Lord quicker. Yeah. But surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing the secrets to His prophets. How many know God's telling His people? That's why we've got to be in prayer. Father, what's going on? What's happening? You know, I had several friends warned about 9-11. I wasn't one of them. But, you know, we started praying for those situations. I'm not going to go into my friend. That's another story. But unless he reveals the secrets of his counsel to his servants of prophets, a, a lion has roared who will not fear. I wonder if God's roaring, but America's deaf and not listening. We're deaf. Obama's the deafest because of his arrogance and pride. They liberally define the living God and what he's doing. The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? I'm skipping over to chapter 4. Oh, the under the SC, kitty under the SC. Chapter 4, I'm just because I want to read about when we do not return to the Lord. Some of that's also the last part of chapter 3, but verse 1. Hear the word, uh, he, hear this word, you cows. <laughs> How many here are cows? A very moving scripture right here, moving. <laughs> and, you know, hear the word, you cows of Basham, who are in the mountain of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say, in your, say to your husband, bring now that we may drink. What are you doing? Why did God bring judgment? You oppress the poor and the needy. I, I want you to tell you something. Welfare is not a blessing for the poor. It is not. It keeps them in bondage. It keeps them in slavery to a system, to a welfare. Do not work and go have kids and they barely have enough to scrape by. Welfare is not an answer. That puts them in poverty. The Democrats put them in poverty. The handouts put you in poverty. How many know the people that are in welfare are most of them are in poverty? And they're That's stuck. Right. That's on a right. system, That's and they, they're too lazy to get out of the system. And we're going into debt by the billions and trillions because of it. Mm -hmm. is, God says a man does not work, a man does not eat, we, we throw them on the welfare. And they've come and decimated the marriage in America. There's another issue why all this crap is going on, but that's another story. But he says, uh, Who say to your husbands, Bring now that I may drink. You know, you're fat, you're fat in your sub, but we don't take care of the needy. You know, we're, we're required as a church to, to feed the hunger and the needy. You know, I love it when David Hogan went down to Katrina. 
God says, David Hogan, he says, David Hogan says, I only had $25,000 and God sent me to Katrina. All of a sudden, truckloads of food begin to show up. And this is, well, we're going to give it to you, David Hogan. He had truckloads, truckloads, semi truck, millions of dollars came in supernaturally, even through FEMA to David Hogan. I can't remember the whole story, but it all came, as God said, go, I had to make her 25 grand. But God owned the cattle on a thousand hills to get the job done. Amen. How many know God knows how to get the job done? If you're obedient to God and go where God sends you, look at Heidi Baker. God says, go and feed the orphans in Mozambique. You know what? Planes started to fly in. Shiploads began to come in with food and supplies for Heidi Baker. You know, it's incredible what God can do. Yeah. When, 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 God is, when God is for you, how many know God can work with you? And I, I tell you, if you're just playing games with Jesus and like God, you're, you're like, take God when you need Him, how many know God doesn't work through you as, as often? Because God says, I'm looking for faithful people that I can rely on, that I can trust, but they have a proven track record over and over and over again. How many know God looks for that in people? And sometimes in our lives, we feel like we're going around the mountain. It says, Lord, I don't want to go around the mountain. I want to, I want to go to the top and get victory. How many am I talking about? You know, we don't want to keep, we want to get victory for Jesus. But, but he goes on and says, uh, The Lord God has sworn by His holiness, Behold, the days are coming upon when they will take away your meat hooks and at last your fish hooks. Look at You're not going to have meat anymore. If, you don't, if, if America don't repent, the most of the world ain't going to have their meat. Only those that know their God are going to have meat. You, you will go through the breaches and the walls, each one straight before her, and you will be cast into harmony, declares the Lord. And this next part. Here's another part. If you don't give God your increase, enter Bethel and transgress and giggle and multiply. Trans, and multiply your transgressions. Bring your sacrifice every morning, your tithe every three days. Offer a thank offering also from that which is leaven. You know, they're not bringing their offerings. And when you're offering an offering, you're bringing your leaven. You're not bringing your unleavened. You're bringing your worst sacrifice. God says, but you haven't done your offerings. You haven't given your tithes. You haven't, you haven't given freely. You, 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 by fear, you, you held back. God says, a judgment comes because we, we hold on to our pocketbooks. How many on God says, give it, learn how to give things away. Learn how to release what you have. You know, and, and, and one of our person, God help us have seed to give continually, day and night. Let me sow that it keeps coming back. You know, but they weren't willing to give God their best and proclaim a free will offering, make, and they make them known. You know, look what I'm doing, like the, the Pharisees. I'm giving money away, but look what I'm giving away. You know, they want to be known. God says, you know, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. You know, I mean, that doesn't always happen, but you know, we, we got to give with a heart, Lord. I'm just giving because you told me to give. Whether they see or don't see, I just give them because you told me to give. You know, God's looking for a right heart. For, for so you love to do and your offerings. Your sons of Israel declares the Lord God because because I gave you, because of this is I gave you cleanness of teeth I give you famine. You know, saying man, if you don't give God the first fruits of your life, he says, you know, how many of God can dry things up really quick for you? How many of you can dry things up in your life? And you go, why is that going on? Well, you, you never gave me your best. You held back. You, you held back from me. But I gave you cleanness of teeth. That means famine in all your cities. And lack of bread in all your places. And I believe that's one reason America has been blessed so long as a nation as a whole. Because we have given to other nations. More than any other nation in the world. We've given. God's blessed us. But I, you know what? I see that blessing being turned off if we don't change in a nation. But it's not going to change for you and I that know our God. I want to tell you. Things can be getting bad. But those that know their God are going to do exploits. Those that know their God, man is going to show up from heaven. God's going to feed you supernaturally. God says, He Lord says, I never saw the righteous begging for bread. This bread came from heaven. It came supernaturally. It showed up. As God says, the righteous won't have to beg for bread. Amen. How many know that? This bread, it showed up out of heaven. 
We won't have to beg for it. God will see. You know, the same God that's bringing us bread, He says, now have faith. You know, I love the story of Johnny and Larry Olson who used to come to our church. For 30, for, they had no money. They had two kids. They had no money to feed themselves. They were praying for people that were getting healed. They didn't even have gas money. And, and for 30 days when they had no money coming in, supernaturally food would be in the cupboards of the refrigerator every day for 30 days. And then one day he's going, well, Lord, I'd really like a, a Godfather pineapple and Canadian bacon pizza. He said, Lord, I really want one of those today during that 30 days. You know what? God used his mother-in-law to bring him a... a she didn't know, but here, she brings a pizza just what, he, just what he ordered. How many know God will bend over backwards to bless his children that honor him and serve him? He'll right. bend over backwards. Uh, a similar story that reminds me of the old pastor of RCC, Brett... Brett Hollis. Brett Hollis. Um, he, one day, he heard of someone that was sick in... Uh, the hospital that he either knew or went to his church and he had this pressing on his heart to go pray for this person and he resisted he's like no I, I don't want to do that Lord I don't want to do that and it kept bugging him and he wanted to go get chicken teriyaki so he's like all right Lord I'll go pray for this person but out of this I better get chicken teriyaki he you know stubborn child but he goes, prays for the person. I don't remember what they had, but that person was almost instantly healed. Like, next day I was out of the hospital. But when he goes back to his office, his assistant walks in. He's like, you know what? I, went, I was going to get teriyaki, and I, I just thought of you. So I bought an extra helping of chicken teriyaki for you. And he didn't talk to her, didn't know anything, showed up. You know, but God can supernaturally provide. And when we step in his will, and we do what he asks us to do, you know, he'll he'll cover those things. That's why I said, you know, it's going to be so exciting. If, if these, you know, I'm not looking forward to hardships coming to America, but the other, but the other extreme, it's going to be so exciting to see how God provides. You know right. what I'm saying? One extreme you're going, oh no, but the other extreme you're going, wow, I get to step into the kingdom that's not of this realm. Mm -hmm. When we got this loaf of bread, how many know this loaf of bread did not come from this realm? Mm -hmm. Did not come... It came supernaturally. How that happened, whether the angels went and picked up in the bakery and bought it. You know, God can use some inner linen garments that just yeah. look like you and I. They can go right into the bakery and buy the bread, and they can come and deliver it to Glenn's house or your house or, or Dan. You know, God can do it any way he wants to do it. You know, I, how he does it, I don't know if they're bringing it from heaven. I don't know if it's coming, you know. But God, and I tell you what, when God's doing stuff like this, he can do it a thousand different ways. That's right. There, you cannot put God in the Bible. Well, he did it this way. For me, well, God's a God of variety. Variety of gifts. Variety of miracles. A variety of signs and wonders. So, whatever God wants to do it. Whether it appears that... When I was in the Biardies meeting, I would, I would see this man just appear out of thin air and fall down in the, this fall one time. I go, oh, look at this. There it is. You know, God can do whatever he wants to do it. And when we see gemstones over at Glen's house sometimes, I'm watching them fall out of thin air, hitting us on the head. What, what, how's it? I don't know how it happens. It just does. You know, when God's turning water into wine, you know what? It's nothing for God to speak to the molecules. That goes right back to Genesis 1 to verse 3 verses. When God created the earth, He spoke in the water and changed the molecular structures of the water and created the whole universe out of that. And so, you know, we have a creative force to speak to things. And, you know... God can change things and you speak to them. God, can, God will change water molecules. You know, they've done all kinds of tests on water molecules. I know you've heard, how many have heard those tests where you're cursing water and you're speaking negative to water or they're playing rock and roll death metal to the water. And when they go put water under a microscope, it's, it's chaos. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it, 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 creation knows the words that are spoken to it. Mm. But if you're going to this loaf of bread, hey man, it came for Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God, check it out, and you shake up, and you, you, and you stick that water or bread under the microscope, all of a sudden there's harmony, there's peace in the molecular structure. They can see this in microscopes. Mm -hmm. yeah. What God's doing. Mm -hmm. Your words have power. Yes. Yes. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And God, Proverbs 6 says, Your words become a snare unto you. I heard people, I said, You just got that. Go ahead, have it. You know, I mean, 
they can say so so death all around them. I mean, no, it's not good to speak death. Amen. You know, God wants you not to speak. See you, Sister Karen. You got a word before you go? Glory. Glory. <laughs> Glory, did you like? You want to pick a piece of bread? Did you get some bread? Yeah. Okay. But hallelujah. But he goes on and says, uh, I give you cleanness of teeth and the lack of bread in all your places. You have not, but you said you have not returned to me. God said 9-11, you know what? We did not return to the Lord after 9-11. He says, I give you a famine, you still didn't return to me. Listen to this, declares the Lord. Furthermore, I withheld the rain from you while there's still three months of harvest. Then I would send rain on one city, and on another city I would not send rain. One part would be rained on, the other part would be flooded, did not have rain, it would dry up. So two or three cities would stagger to one city to drink water, but, we, but would not be satisfied. How many of you know there's no satisfaction out of the will of God? But you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. I smote you with scorching winds, fires, mildew. You know, caterpillars were devouring all your gardens and all your crops and all your vineyards and your trees and your olives. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. I sent age. You have not returned to me, declares the Lord. I sent the Nile virus. You know, God's gonna, there's plagues coming. To the nations of the world like we've never seen, yet America and the nations of the world will not return to God. Some might, but the God says, you, won't, you have not returned to me. I sent plagues among you after the manner of Egypt. You know, that Egypt turned back to God with the plague. They never, they got, Pharaoh's heart got harder. What's going to happen in Revelations? They're going to curse God in the Revelations when the plagues are out. They're going to curse God. It says, and they would not repent of their sins in Revelation when the wrath of God was poured. They would not repent of their sins. See, these things are coming. I sue you, young men, by the sword, along with your captured horses. I mean, he's wiping out the Amas by Israel, and they're still coming after him. They still want more. They still want to kill another few million Hamas. It was a thing they can win when they can't. Because they're coming against the Most High God. <laughs> I made a stench of your camps rise up in your nostrils. Because the dead bodies, I believe, you, yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. I overthrew you as Sodom and Gomorrah. There's going to be volcanoes, you know, Mount Rainier, Mount Adams, you know, Mount Baker. Probably mountains we do not even know of. How do we know they're about ready to go up? Some of these mountains. Right now, out in the ocean. There's all kinds of activity 100, 100 200 miles off our coast. Those volcanic mountains being formed all over under our ocean right now on the Pacific, on that ring of fire. Don't forget Yellowstone. Yellowstone's another thing that, that's teeing up right now. You know, God's reserved these things for a day of judgment on a nation that will not repent of God from God. I mean, these are things that God says, if you don't turn to me, Sodom and Gomorrah, what are we doing? We got a president that's a, that's a home that's a bisexual. And yet, the guys, you know, this is for the camp. He had sodomy acts with people. They want to pro they, they want to indict him. It was a, a Senate hearing. These guys that had sodomy with our president. All three of these men are dead now. They're dead. Yay for Obama. I overthrew you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were like a firebrand snatched from the fire. How many know that, that God can st still snatch you from the fire? Yes. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When that fire came, God snatched you. Brian, last night, last night, we're just listening to Brian on the radio, Marty. A fire tornado came into him last night. The, the ring of fire was, was burnt part of his crops last night. And he was trying to get things out, and all of a sudden a tornado fire threw Brian and threw Brian to the ground. Extreme heat. He got out with his life. God snatched Brian Perry from the fire last night. From the fire last night. We just talked to Marty before church and gave us a report. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. How many have lost things and says, Lord, if you only get my life back, I'll serve you, but they never follow through with that. 
How many have heard people say that? Well, God, if you only do this, I'll serve you. And God does it. They go back to doing their own thing. It happens all the time. Some people make a commitment to God and they stick with it. But a lot of people do not stick with that commitment to God. And so I, I'm going to, I want to play just a, a video here by Brother Henry Goober. For, if I can find it here, just, I think I'd save it. Uh, uh, someone's messing, messing with you guys. But I want to I get something by Henry Goober right here. Just hang on a second. I just want to play this where God will draw you and I into cities of refuge. Hey, Jerry, can you get that more center? I'm going to turn the TV more this way for the camera. I can't because we have a limited yeah. cord. So I'm, going to, I'm going to turn it. So if you want to watch this, I just encourage you to move so people can see it on the TV. But you can hear it. You don't have to really. You just listen to it. Let me just. You can hear it. You don't have to. Okay, I got. I got to hang on a second. I got. I got to shut off my. I got to shut off my U-stream here. This is gonna. Hang on. Just give me a second to shut this out. Why don't you put tell them what you're watching so they can watch it? Uh. Because I'm trying to shut this off first. <laughs> Not get so this on. is Henry Gruber speaking at the Prophecy Club. Yeah, it's Henry Goover at the Prophecy Club. What date? Uh, I do not know the date. It's been a while. It's, it's a vision that he had from the Lord. It says published October 2012. Your Highness, when the bronze hit, and you will see the bronze hit. Hang on, my son's still going. Hang on, my son's still going. Three things open, I couldn't find where it was coming. Maybe we hear it, maybe we don't. But Henry talks about how God's going to bring the wicked. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's going to gather the righteous to himself, but the wicked he's going to put in cities for judgment. So when the judgments come, God's going to gather a lot of gays in the San Francisco, or where there might be big gay pride parades come with millions of them. All of a sudden, the judgment comes to that city and wipes them all out. Oh, you know, God knows how to take care of His own people. That's Amen. Right. You know, God, God knows how to do it. Now, the next vision that I want to finish this segment up with is this. This vision, I watch the hand of God because God said, I will not let utter annihilation take place in this nation. In the latter days, I will gather the wicked who have no heart to repent. I will gather them as I gather the animals into Noah's ark. And I shut the door. I will gather them into cities that are marked for utter destruction. They will be in massive conferences and conventions. They will be parading down the streets in the nude in all their philosophies and all their demands and their haughtiness when the bombs hit. And you will see them no more. If you don't believe that, that's Psalms chapter 37. You will look for them, the Word of God says, and they will be ashes under your feet. I say to you, if you are watching this right now, and you are haughty in your spirit, and you say away with this Christian stuff, and all this radical Christianity, I plead with you, it is time to repent. Behold, today is the day of salvation. If you don't turn now, you will be drawn by the Spirit of God, and when the destruction hits this nation, it will take you out, and you will be ashes under the believer's feet. The Word of God says it. In that vision... I saw missiles coming up over the coastal range. They were cruise missiles. I explained them to a gentleman just a few days ago who's an official from the Pentagon. And he asked me many questions about these missiles that came in out of the sea. They came off the sea. They were fired from the sea. And he said, Henry, those were cruise missiles. And he said, we've been worried about this. Because he said, you see these subs, the cooler subs and Typhoon subs are all loaded with cruise missiles. It's cruise missiles that are undetectable. And we're afraid they're going to take out our strategic command centers. I saw them coming, but I heard the voice of God, a powerful voice behind me say, Watch what I will do! And all of a sudden, as those missiles were just coming up over the coastal range, ash shot out and plumes above them, right in the path of them. Those cruise missiles are literally powered by turbofan cruise missiles, by turbo engines. They are made just like a jet engine. Ash gets into them, they shut down. In the vision, they went like this and they went down. They didn't even explode. Fail-safe systems in them. God is going to have areas marked 
across this nation where no penetration will be. They will not be hurt. I saw areas of giant plexiglass areas over cities. Certain cities, I will not name to you the cities. You obey the Lord, He'll make sure you're there. Just like He's going to make the wicked be in the wrong place, He'll have the righteous be in the right place if you will be honorable with the Lord. I saw masses of military men shooting everybody in sight. They split ranks and went around these dome areas and places where people were on their faces praying. They didn't even know they split ranks. They didn't even look at each other when they came back shoulder to shoulder as if to say, where have you been? It was the Spirit of the Lord that protected them. And that's what God says that He will do in this day. Then I saw the, the masses coming in of troops in some areas across this nation. Again, I heard the thundering voice saying, Watch what I will do. And all of a sudden, volcanic eruptions of lava begin to flow out of these, these places. And rivers of lava, I saw them flow sideways on mountains and create walls of fire around areas. And the righteous were protected in those areas. Tanks don't go through lava. Troops don't walk through them. So the planes, next came the fighter planes and the bombers. And again, this thundering voice said, watch what I will do. And as they came in, again, the plumes of ash shot up in the path of them. And those that God were protecting, the planes never reached them. They crashed and burned. God has a plan, people. But I want to tell you something. If you want to be a part of His plan, you've got to walk and talk with Him. You've got to begin to commune and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to stop calling this that we're talking about gloom and doom. It is not gloom and doom. It's the pleadings of God. It's the judgment of God. The wrath is soon to follow. Do you want the judgment of God? In Psalms chapter 37, it says, verse 10, the righteous talk of his judgment all the day long. It is not unrighteous to talk about the judgment of God. It is the word of God. The righteous seek his judgment, for in his judgment we become righteous. And it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I want to see him in the catching away. You better believe it. But I want to see him down here. I faced too much in my life. I faced too many guns and knives in my life. And I've survived them. I've, I've survived 27 minutes dead. I've survived armies around and terrorists around me. I've gone into their hideouts and I've come out alive. Because the Lord protected me. And if He'll protect me, He will protect you. I'm not giving you a message of gloom and doom. I'm giving you a message of warning. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Yeah. Today is the day of the Lord. Not tomorrow. Today. Events are getting ready to snap, crackle, and pop around this world so fast. And God is wanting you and I, as His people, to be on the victor's side and not the victim side. And I'll end with this. I asked the Lord about all these camps, like government camp that I mentioned to you. And I said, Lord, what about Auschwitz and, and all these different places where so many were imprisoned and killed? And the Lord answered me and said this, different season, different generation. I promise that when this generation comes forth, it will not pass until all things spoken by the law and the prophets be fulfilled. All things talks in Psalms 91, Psalms 37, Psalms 2, the kings of the earth have set themselves in array against the Lord and against His anointed. But the Lord shall sit in the heavens. Oh, wow. Will He chew His nails to the quick and say, Oh no, they're going to destroy all my people and I can't do a thing about it. It doesn't say that, people. It says He is going to sit in the heavens and laugh and hold them in derision and say, Hold on, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Mount Zion. Ask of me, and I'll give you the heathen. God so loves the world that he doesn't want any to perish. That's the heathen. He doesn't want to give them to you as ashes under your feet. He wants to give them to you redeemed. Yes. He wants a mighty revival to take yes. place across the land. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do for Thank you, Brother Henry. We appreciate that. Now, what do we do about all this? How do we get prepared? You know, the Lord, let's just, let's just take a moment and just pray for Israel. Father, I pray right now, Father, begin to wake up your church, Father. 
God, just wake me up. Wake us up. Let us be on alert. Let us be watching around the wall. Let us hear your voice. Let us know what season we're in, Father. God, we cry out, God, for Israel even tonight. God, as it's, it's hitting morning time, the Lord, it's 6 o'clock in the morning there right now, Father. Lord, I just ask for their, your protection over this Father, I pray the Muslims get saved, God. Some of the sons of, some of those sons of the Moabites and, uh, and Iran and Iran, they will call the name of the Lord too. God, we just ask God that you just do your intervention. Release your ministering angels right now over Israel. Release your worrying angels right now. Oh, yes, Shiki. Lord, I just pray right now that the fire is right now over in eastern Washington. Father, I, I just speak, God, you just silence those fires right now. God, I pray for no more loss of property, Father. The Lord, you protect those. Unless it's so wicked you're trying to deal with. Them. And that's fine. I don't care. But, Lord, I ask this. I, I just pray you start protecting the righteous people, Father. Those that love you. Lord, especially, they'd be a sign of wonder. Why did your house get burnt and I'm all over it? Then, well, I love Jesus. I love the Lord. He, just, he watches over me. Lord, the Bible says in Malachi that you're going to start putting distinction between the righteous and the wicked. Lord, let this be a season even when these plagues and judgments and fires come. We heard how it skipped over one mound to the next mound. You could skip, Lord, you can do whatever you want. But God, I ask right now you begin to protect the righteous. Those that call upon your name, protect their property from these things, Father. God, you, Lord, you put distinction, it says, between the right, those that know their God and those that don't know your God. Lord, I pray this be a time where we begin to see the distinction come between the righteous and the unrighteous. That we know the rain falls in the just and unjust alike. But God, we're in a, I believe, like Henry said, we're coming into a different season where, Lord, you're going to start protecting some of your righteous when these things come. So, Father, we, we just give you praise and honor. Just lead out in prayer and on Mike's got something off. Yeah. Lord's yeah. been oh, having me pray for Israel for years. Oh, and I just yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. at this point in time, especially when we see the, um, the troubles that they're having, we need all to be in prayer for. And uh, basically some of the prayers he's given me is, I pray that the Lord Jesus would continue to stretch his mighty arm over the nation of Israel, a shield of such power and magnitude that Satan and all his dominion would shriek away and say, not with trouble or elsewhere. And the other one he gave me uh, was that Israel be led by his spirit. He spoke that to me, and he declared it, and I heard him declare it. But he, he said, Israel be led by a spirit, beyond their desires, beyond their wants, beyond their understanding, but by my spirit will the choice be made. And he's doing it. He's doing that right now. He's guiding Israel by his spirit. And he'll continue to do so. And they don't have a chance to make mistakes over there. They've got to make the right choices. And I, well, Father, I just thank you. You're doing that right now. And you'll continue to do it. And you'll guide Israel by your spirit. Yes. Even beyond their understanding. We're just thanking you for that. We're thanking you for what you're going to do over there. We're thanking you for the changes you're going to bring in our nation. There's many in our nation, Lord, they don't see your heart. They don't understand your ways. Lord, we ask that their eyes be open. We ask that their ears be open to hear. We ask that you give them understanding in their hearts. And you turn those who are in darkness to your light. Many of our leaders are in darkness, Lord. We need godly leaders. We ask you to replace them. Replace our leaders with men that hear your heart, they have your heart. And we'll bring in our nation and it'll walk with you again. That you'll do that. You'll help our nation to come back to you. Yes. And that um, and that you hope our the, your word declares the judgment begins in the house of God, Lord. We're asking you to, to clean house there too. Lord, that you uh, that you turn the hearts of those leaders that, that will turn and and uh, find that path back to you and do your will within the churches, within those that they lead, and those that will not remove them. Just take them out of, out of that service, Lord. Put somebody else in that has a heart for you, Lord, that, that has a love for you, that will bring the churches back in line with you, with your will, with your heart. It will help our nation, Lord, come back into your arms and bring more in honor to your name. Because you're, the other ones you've been to me lately is that your, your glory is coming on this earth with an authority and a power and a magnitude we cannot comprehend. And it's coming. You're doing it, Lord. You called it in. You've, you've heard the prayers of your saints and you said yes. And you're going to do that. Your glory is going to come on this earth with such such magnitude that no one, even if they were told what you're going to do, would believe it. 
And we're just thanking you for what's coming on this earth, Lord. We're thanking you for the changes you're going to bring, for the shift in this world and in the hearts of people. Uh, you, you spoke to... Um, oh, you spoke to one of your servants and you gave him a vision of... of um, or you took, you took him up to heaven, and he was standing, Bruce Allen, took him up to heaven, he's standing with Jesus up in the heavens, and he's, uh, <clears throat> Jesus has a large bowl of wine, he pours one drop on the earth, and he says, this represents a huge revival that's happened in the past, and he takes the bowl and pours another drop on the earth, and he says, this represents another huge revival in the past, that's happened in the past, and then he takes the bowl and pours it all over the earth, and he says, that's what's coming, and that is what's coming. God's going to do that. He's going to pour out His, his Spirit and His grace and uh, revival all over this earth. It's going to come, and it's going to come with such magnitude that we're not going to even we're not going to believe it. And I just thank you for what's come. The glory for you, beyond understanding. Just thank you for what you're going to do on this earth, Lord, and the outpouring of your Spirit. And Lord, we ask for the for. The, for the sons of Ishmael, Lord, that you would give them, the Arabs, and all those that are in the Muslim faith, Lord, you would open their hearts, open their minds, open their spirits to know the true God of this world. The true God of this world, that they would come to know Him and to, uh, and to come to that close relationship with Him and know that there's no other God of love like that out there, that has such a deep love for all His creation. There's no other God out there that even comes close. And we're just thanking you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What you're going to do on this earth? The outpouring of your spirit, Lord. And that you'll uh, continue to anoint the prayers of your saints, Lord, all over this world. This is another prayer that he's given me. That uh, he would reach into the hearts and minds and souls and spirits of his people. And he would call those prayers to move the mountains. So he would have move. To unlock every door he would have open. Every door. Not one being missed. For the glory of my God will be complete. Lacking yes. nothing. There's a glory yes. coming to our God that we cannot comprehend. And it's through yeah. the prayers of the saints that He's anointing all over this world that the doors will be open for His glory to come down on this earth. To bring the changes in the governments, to bring the changes in the hearts of the people. And we're just thanking you, Father, for what you're going to do on this earth. For the glory that's coming to your name. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, Mike, can I say something real quick? I was just going to say, you know, I think one reason why God um, moves when we pray, one reason why he chooses, maybe a better way to say it, why he chooses to withhold moving until we pray is, is because he wants us to be co-laborers with him. Because he has, a, I have a friend that says, um, God is looking for any excuse to reward us for all eternity. So he That's wants right. to use us as we pray, as we, you know, as we listen to his heart and agree with his heart and come before him to intercede for his heart. That gives him an excuse to reward us because then he credits that to our account. Even though he's the one that does it, he credits it to our account because we cared to agree with him and to bring it to him and agree with him and so we get credited so we can be rewarded for what he wants to do that's you know um Amen. it's always a win-win-win situation with you know with Amen. god he always does it that way you know you were saying with the bread i was thinking as you were saying god could do it a thousand different ways i was thinking that could be how he could provide for well, some sure. little old ladies, you know. They're baking the bread, and he sends his, he sends his, you know, angels, angels or men and linen, whatever, yeah. to buy it, to, to provide, it. you know, to give it away. Because, you know, he, 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 he always, he loves to use people. He yeah. loves to, you know, bless them. So he could be taking care of somebody while he's blessing. You know, Glenn and Terry and all these. Here, here's some of the latest report on Fox here. We'll see what's going on. I haven't really watched it much today. You got to sit. We'll get you out. Yeah, Brett, hello. We've uh, seen and heard a lot of gunfire, uh, not only several miles in the distance behind me, but we've seen flares 
going up like the one you're seeing behind me right now. We've heard a lot of gunfire there. We've also seen tracer fire across the street, a home where a building was hit by a missile attack earlier this evening. This as troops continue to push even further into Gaza as the battle rages on. In the early morning hours, Israeli troops took control of ground Hamas is suspected of using for underground tunnels to infiltrate Israel. There are no guarantees for total success, but we will do the utmost to achieve the best results. The Defense Minister and I have instructed the Army to prepare for the possibility of significant expansion of the ground operation. Ground troops exchanged heavy fire with Hamas militants from the north to the south of the Gaza Strip. One Israeli soldier was killed, his death being investigated as a possible friendly fire incident. Along with the battle on the ground, there were strikes from above. The Israeli Air Force hit at least 150 targets in the Gaza Strip, one of the targets, a TV production company. One person was injured in that attack. So far, nearly 300 Palestinians have been killed and more than 1,700 wounded. At least 40 people were killed since the ground operation was launched last night. Hamas militants have fired more than 1,500 rockets at Israel since Operation Protective Edge started 11 days ago. Today alone, 100 rockets. The militant group has attacked Israeli tanks as they advance into the narrow and heavy populated Gaza Strip. Netanyahu has made the wrong decision by going into Gaza. The resistance knows how to respond heavily. We know that the occupation will regret this when the resistance will make Gaza a graveyard for them. So the flares continue to light up the sky as the battle rages on. Just behind me a couple miles, there's been significant gunfire tonight. We've also seen tracer fire across the street on the location, and also a building was hit by a missile just around the corner from our location here. Uh, more than 70,000 troops are amassed along the border as they continue to push even deeper into Gaza. And today was one of the bloodiest so far in the 11-day conflict. 63 people were killed, including eight members of one family, Brett. John Hadley live again in Gaza City. John, thanks. We'll head back for any breaking details. story, Israel prepared for a significant expansion on the ground in Gaza, according to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He says they're ready with tanks, artillery, and intelligence units, all backed by aerial and naval support. Israel launching a ground attack yesterday, while Hamas firing back saying, bring it on, and warning that Israel is stepping into dangerous territory. Danny Dannon is Israel's former deputy defense minister, and he joins us now live from Tel Aviv. And Danny, I know you just had to be evacuated. We can hear the the air sirens behind you, but uh, also you are the former defense minister because you were fired today by Netanyahu. Why? <laughs> Good evening, Gretchen. First of all, yes, I have to give you a heads up that there are sirens raids going off in Tel Aviv, so maybe I will have to run again to the protective area with the crew here in the studio, but I hope it will not happen in a few minutes. I was fired by Prime Minister Netanyahu because I said very clearly that we should not accept the premature ceasefire that was offered to us by the Egyptians. I think it was a mistake and I, I think now we're doing the right thing. Now that we have the ground attack in Gaza, I support the Prime Minister and I told him that is the way we should handle the terrorists. Not talking with them, fighting with them. And so he did not agree with that. In fact, the news that has come into Fox here is that Netanyahu is said to have ordered the operation to fend off attacks on him from inside his own party and coalition that he's not doing enough to punish Hamas. Would you agree with that? The, the main argument was whether we need to go into a ground operation or not. The minute the cabinet decided to accept the ceasefire, I said, that's enough. That is not the ideology I was elected to represent. And I'm loyal to my voters, to the majority of Israelis who say to the prime minister, move into Gaza 
and do whatever we have to do. And we are, we are a strong democracy. Unlike our neighbors, you can criticize the leader of your party. And now, when we have no ceasefire, I think people admit that my position was right, that we have to speak with the Hamas in, in a different language. Uh, only last night, we had hundreds of missiles into Israel, and I can tell you, as a father of two young daughters, it is unacceptable that every night you have to take your children and run to the shelter. More two, than two-thirds of the population in Israel are under a threat of missiles. Yeah. I think now we are doing the right thing. All right, so President Obama said today, when he was speaking about the Ukraine situation, that he had spoken to Netanyahu also today about the Gaza operation, and he reaffirmed Israel's right to defend itself. I assume that you were pleased in hearing the president say that. Absolutely. I think it's very important to support Israel unconditionally. Not if, no but. This is a time when we need our friends to be with us. And I know that there is some pressure coming already from my other countries about how long are you going to be in Gaza. And I can tell you, Gretchen, we will be there as long as we need to be there. We have no desire to occupy Gaza. We have no desire to stay there. But we have to do the work. There are dozens of tunnels near, next to our border, and those tunnels are targeted to our civilian communities in Israel. And only two days ago, we were lucky to see certain Hamas terrorists trying to get into the community and to commit a massacre. Mm -hmm. So we cannot leave and accept a ceasefire God, when we have the tunnels and we have the missile capability aiming at us. All right, Danny Dannon, the former defense minister you know, for Netanyahu. Thank you for your you know, thoughts. Today. I thank God those Hamas children are dying. I'll tell you why I thank God they're dying. Because Hamas children, they're under the age of accountability. Yes. It's basically their only chance to go to heaven. Yes. I mean, but, but, but it's basically their only chance to heaven. Now, Henry was, Henry was, I'm just trying to get off of here. Henry was really, was really grieved about what happened in Japan. When, when the tsunami came there a couple Henry, of years Henry ago, Gruber. Henry Groover. And so, long story short, God took him into heaven. He saw tens of thousands of children in heaven that were Japanese, that would have been Hindus and Buddhists. God says, Henry, your prayers all these 20 years demanded the harvest. This is part of the harvest of your intercession for 20 years of prayer. And, and, and so, and, and, and like Kat Kerr talks about, the age of accountability for Muslim kids that are growing up with terrorism. In America, the age of accountability might be seven, eight, nine, ten years, especially if you grow up in a Christian home, you know better. But with an Hamas kid, a Muslim just brought up in all this demonic ideology, their age of accountability might, could be 15, 16, 17, just because there's a different accountability for what you know. And so, and so I look at it, Lord, when the children are dying, see, you got to get, you got to get God's perspective. These kids are going to heaven as innocent kids. Their parents are end up going to hell if getting killed. But the kids are going to hell. That's an answer to prayer. I'd rather see those kids dead in heaven than live their life and go to hell. That's all I'm going to say. Lord bless you. We'll see you tomorrow night. Signing off. Amen. That's right. But isn't that, you know what I'm talking about, though? And so, yeah. Yes. I remember thinking about that.